So I want to show you why I was talking about a couple things today and just give you more reference muscle. I know you are in the room with surgeries that look at all this stuff, but if it's anything like the surgeries I've watched, you really can't identify a whole lot of things when that body is open. So clearly this is just the bones. I'm going to add on the ligaments here in a second. So the things I wanted you to look at, we were talking about connective tissue today down here on your sacrum. We were talking um, like when I was needling that I was on a couple ligaments. All right, so we'll take exercise one, two later. Okay, so don't need your skin fascia, but when we are looking at ligaments, as far as even on like the SI joint area and over the sacrum, you have this big chunk of ligament, which is your iliolumbar ligament, just connects your ilium over here to your lumbar. And then you also have your sacrotuberous ligament. So that is one where if it's kind of irritable or if these muscles have been so tight that they've been pulling on this ligament, it can get pretty uncomfortable. And then the other ones that I get to with my needles are your interosseous SI ligaments. So you just literally cannot get to some of these things with your hands. That's why I think needling is so freaking awesome. Uh, when you are looking as far as spine goes, actually let's turn it a touch more this way. So you've got the inner transverse ones, okay? I always do my best, actually, in case you're wondering, to tap on your actual transverse process because that's where the muscle attachments are, but if I can't get it right on it, I'm going to be in this ligament anyways. And then I actually, I don't get right on your, um, Super spine is one. I can. Let me take that back. I do in certain cases. I did not with you today, but it's something that I might add. So I did not take a picture of you when I was needling you, but I had them lining down the line basically of your transverse process. And then when I do them in the future, if I were to add these on, they would actually go at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, so that they go in between spinous process and get into this ligament. Because let's talk things like deadlifting. Okay, so let's say you have relatively good form. Well, let's say the load is just a little bit too heavy for you. And let's say your hamstrings are really tight. And instead of having a perfect hip hinge, you start getting a teeny bit of flexion here in your lumbar spine. Uh, that can irritate things. It can kind of kick it into a spasm. And then let's also talk about when you're sitting down. So anytime you're sitting down for a while, you are basically, when you see people and they're just slouched and their low, low back is just slouched, the posture itself is not the huge deal, it's the length of time. So any time, and now you, know, you stand up in your job now, but like schooling and things like that, you are hanging on your ligaments. So as far as low back pain goes, it can be muscular, it can be a little bit of disc irritation. Or it can be a little bit of ligament irritation, especially down in here when you get a muscle imbalance. And how on you, we were talking about, let me get a pen here. So on you, your left one was actually rotated a little bit posterior and your right one was a little bit anterior. You could look at that whatever way you want. You could look at it in a sense of um, that instead of this being anterior, this is posterior, or this is posterior, and this is... It doesn't matter who you talk to and who says what, uh, that last one. But basically, there's a muscle imbalance is what we're going for. So there's a lot of discrepancy in the PT world on people who buy into pelvic rotation and people who don't. But regardless, if you can, let's put the muscles on and we'll get a better look. So if you're looking glute max, okay? or glute med. If they are connected down here and they're kind of essentially tipping your hip back, and actually I want to clear this pen off of here. So then if we flip it around and we look at the front side, let's take off top layer of your muscle here. So if we're getting down to where we can really truly see your hip flexors, which are really deep, if you've got one side that's really tight, which was more like your right side is kind of how I'm looking at it, your psoas is going to inherently pull this side up a touch, right? So when I was looking at your PSIS here and here, 
Your right one appeared to be a touch higher, your left one appeared to be a touch lower. The beauty of muscle imbalances and muscle energy is that essentially firing both sides like that um, and then following up with strengthening is going to work on the imbalance whether we get the exact right uh, combination of which side's down, which side's up. But when I was poking you in the stomach, let me show you where your belly button is. So belly button would be like right here. Okay, so if you can kind of keep your eye on this spot here, and then when I take the muscles off, I was asking you to point to it because I go about two fingers wide and two fingers down because that gets me in the middle of your muscle belly. So I was getting iliacus, I was getting your psoas, psoas minor. Then as far as uh, when I was on the back side, the one that really was like, oh, your QL got you pretty good. So that is the other reason um, that when we're talking about rotations and things, it attaches to your hip. So if this guy is in a little bit of protective spasm, like your left one was definitely, it was twitching a little when I was on it, you can just see how certain things being this deep can give a little tiny bit of muscle imbalance. And all it takes is prolonged muscle imbalance to give you pain here, even if the joint didn't move. So that's why I don't love when people tell people, oh, your SI joint is out. Like, research shows that that thing is probably theoretically not moving at all. It's one of the strongest structurally sound joints in the body. However, if you go and you apply tension to it for months, it's going to be sore and you're going to have irritation there. So I like muscle energy techniques because you can take the pressure off of there. And then when you were asking how far down your multifidus goes, I mean, that's the tip of your coccyx right there. So this it goes really, really low. So actually, I needled you all the way down to about here. Um, your gluteal cleft, butt crack, about right this level. So I had it maybe a touch above it, um, lined these guys. I had one in each QL. Next time, depending on what it's looking like, we can get in uh, to your hip flexors and see if we need to loosen them up a little bit more. The nice thing about dry needling, too, is it automatically increases muscle firing rate. So when I had you immediately follow it up with activating your multifidus and then activating your hip flexors, it just gets things firing better. So that's an anatomy overview. Sorry it's a touch long, but kind of figured you can respect the body and all of its awesome anatominess. So wanted to give you a look at that. Um, the other thing that I was talking about actually before I end this is disc wise. So let's get your connective tissue up here. So I don't think you've got like a bulging disc or anything like that. However, if you injure things by a flexion pattern, and flexion tends to be bothersome, typically the spine responds really, really well to extension. It's called uh, directional preference. So I didn't really take you through a ton of that today. We will do that more in a future visit, but I did put it in your homework. So you'll be doing those press ups your disc sits obviously right in here. So when you're sitting, even if you just have a tiny bit of irritation, think of it like, it's not a jelly full donut, but if you're sitting forward or sitting, it's gonna have pressure on the forward part and it's gonna put pressure towards the back. So lots of extension just helps push the pressure towards the middle. Even if that disc is not bulging, it's gonna centralize pressure um, and increase blood flow and fluid flow to your discs. There you go.